Hello, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, we are going to go over how to create type within Maya. Uh, for my students who have been working on a homework assignment, the method of creating type within Maya has changed from older versions to this newer version, either in 2019 or 2020. To create type, we're going to go into the File menu, and we're going to go into Create. And here we have a new type tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select type. And once I do this, click. Uh, two things have uh, happened. First, we get this text that appears within our uh, perspective window within our 3D space. Then we get this new window that shows up right here. This window here is called the attribute editor. And you can see the tab right here. You can still switch back to the channel box, but we want to use the attribute editor because this this window offers all the different options for our type. So by default, it's going to say 3D type. Uh, within the attribute editor, we have all these different tabs. I want you to locate the type 1 tab. Now it says type 1 simply because this is the first uh, type that we have. If you have multiple types, it'll say type 2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So right here it says type 1, or just look for the type tab. And in here we're able to type, or you can even copy some text. I'm going to go ahead and type in art uh, 326. I press return, uh, 3D computer animation. So I'm going to zoom out right here. We have all of this wording right here, but I want to show you uh, within this window what you're able to do. Uh, I want to first point out that you are able to change the font. Whatever font is uh, installed on your machine, you're able to change that. So say, for example, any font that you have uh, already installed, you're able to have access to it. Now, some fonts might work a little bit better depending on the complexity. Uh, I just want to go ahead and select uh, a, a, a kind of like a. I'm just going to go to go ahead and select Arial, just a, a regular font. Some of these do have the bold and regular, uh, so some of them have different uh, styles. And under text, uh, right here, you have some other options. Now these options are similar to what you'll find in any type of uh, uh, digital word processor. You can change the alignment, uh, left, center, right. Say so I want these to be center. Uh, you can change the font size. Notice how this is really large compared to my grid. So I could either click and drag or I could enter a value. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that I could see my grid a little bit better. You have your tracking, which changes how close the letters are going to be. I'm going to undo, just leave it. You can change the kerning, which is the spacement of all your letters. You can ch change the leading or letting. You can even change the width between your words. Uh, what you're also able to do uh, down here under this type manipulator, you're even able to change uh, the placement of each individual letter. I'm going to go ahead and cl double click on this type tool here, which opens up a window over here that I have. It's a floating window. If I want this window, right now I have the outliner displayed. I could always take out the outliner. Let me hide the outliner for right now. Sometimes this window, I'm going to click and drag it and I'm going to connect it over here. So sometimes you might even find that your options for your your tool settings are, might be in a separate window. So I'll leave this for right, right here for right now. You have your op options here with this tool, uh, this type manipulator. You're able to change, say, for example, the word art. Maybe I want this to, I want to scale this up. If I click on this one, I'm making this A really large. I could click on the arrows to change the placement. Now this is for the character. So say, for example, if I want the next letter, if I want to move it, I'm going to click on the R. You can see I can move these around. I could change its placement. I could scale it from just one size. 
Or if I want to, I could move it into a different position. I can click on the T. Maybe I can scale this one a little bit larger. Well, you see how you're able to change some of these values. Now, up here, I brought this window up because you're able to change the character. You're also able to decide to select the word. So say, for example, I want 326, and maybe I want this to be up here. Or you could even change a whole entire line. So now I have this computer animation, and maybe I want to scale these in so that they're a little bit smaller. Or I would be I just want to move them. So there's various things that you're able to do. So this is with uh, changing or, or using this type of manipulator. I'm gonna go ahead and unselect this. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zoom in on on these. I don't want this window anymore, this tool setting, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I could double click on it to minimize it. But also if I just click and drag it, it's a floating window, I'm gonna click on it to close it. So this is default settings for uh, something similar that you'll find in many different uh, digital water processors. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the geometry tab here. And you're able to change further settings on the look of your of the words that are created. These right here, if I'm not mistaken, are uh, polygon in shape. So I'm gonna go back to the attribute editor. I'm just looking right here because it says how it says polygon. I just want to double check. And the attribute editor under geometry, curve resolution, for example, if I drag this down, you can see how it's going to get a little bit more blocky. So maybe that's a style that you're looking for, something that is really blocky. When I deselect it, it looks something like this. Or maybe I want it to be even smoother. The default setting was set to four. When I deselect it, that looks fine, but I could always increase that curve resolution to 10, which is going to make sure it's really nice and smooth. But one thing to note is that it is increasing the amount of polygons that I have in my scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back to four. And there are different settings that you're able to do as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and some of these settings as we're working with, I would suggest by all means to experiment with them. You could always change them if they do nothing. Uh, either edit undo or command or control Z, depending if you're on if you're a Mac or, or PC. These doesn't look like it's doing anything for me right now. I'm gonna leave that there right here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, skip over deformable type because then I wanna go ahead and look at the extrusion. Right now, notice how your text has been extruded. And by default, this is my extrusion. I could extrude it more or less, depending on how much you want it to be. Uh, by default, since it is extruded, it has to have some thickness. So it's not completely flat. If I deselect it, you notice that there is some thickness. So I could make it larger. I'm gonna go ahead and just undo to take me back to my default. Now, right here for extrude offset, right now I don't have anything set right now. But for one of these profiles, if I change this, it looks like nothing's happening. But if I change it to one of these, we'll go right here to this one, where it's a little bit convex. If I start to change this, notice how it starts to change the style. Now I wanna point out in this case, for any shape that has like an interior uh, cutout, like the six, if I go too much, I get some weird clipping issues that happen. So watch out for that as you're working with it. This one's kind of going uh, convex, where it's kind of going inside. Uh, I get a little bit of clipping right here. So I want to just be mindful of those things. But, but you're also able to change them. So that one doesn't work. That's still clipping on the outside. We get 
this, this, just the slightest of clipping that ha that is happening. So say if I want something that looks like this, or I could just put it back to zero. The extrude divisions, right here it says four. This is just one. Now depending on what type of, here I'll, I'll go ahead and change this. Depending on how many divisions you have, you'll get a different shape or smoothness. But as I was mentioning, by all means, experiment with these different settings. You're also able to enable some bevels. Right now, this is not beveled. I'm just going to deselect it just so we can look at it. And it has these really hard edges where the front face and the side. I'm going to go and click on this. I'm going to enable this bevel. Right now, I already have uh, a pr uh, default s selected. Now, notice how it changes. Let me go ahead and disable, enable. And this too has its own settings under the bevel diff distance. So how much? So there is zero, which is right here. You can go a negative value or positive. You also have a, a slight offset that you're able to change and also the bevel divisions. Now I want you to notice along this edge right here, I'm gonna drop this down all the way down to, to one. So I get this type of a hard chiseled bevel. But if I increase this bevel divisions, it's gonna get a little bit more smoother. Here's two. And as I increase this, let's go ahead and select six for example you see how it gets a lot smoother. So these are various options that are available for you as you're working with the type tool. Uh, you're always able to change these, manipulate these. Uh, right now, this is all one object. So if I switch to my move tool, you see how this is now one complete object. So I want you to go ahead and I switched to the channel box and just to show you that you can also have the same options within the channel box. The channel box and attribute to you are two different methods of being able to select basically working with the sim similar information. In this case, the attribute editor gives us a little bit more information on how to be able to manipulate the information here. But you could always go in the channel box and you'll find that under the type, you'll have all that information in regards to the, uh, the font size, current, scale, etc. And then under the different attributes that are found right here, you'll find all the other uh, options as well. But in this case, I like going into the attribute editor where it makes it a little bit easier to find and navigate these different settings. So I hope this is helpful on how to create your own type. Now again, you do not need to use the warp tool. Uh, this is just an example of how to use it. All right, so I do hope that this uh, brief demo uh, helped you out to learn how to use the type tool more within this version of uh, Maya. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.